Okay, I've had a lot of guys interested in buying, trying to find cars, turnkey cars and kits and asking me what's available, what was out there and of course now it's awful hard nowadays because we know there's no kits available, there's nothing really you can buy. But I do have the archives. Hey look, see, archives, magazines, remember these things? Yeah, so that's where, about the only place you're going to be able to find any of this stuff because uh, they're not going to advertise on the internet or anything like that anymore. They, they're not... They can't. They're done. So, they, so if you're going to find one, you got to find one from back in the day that was built not finished if you want a kit. Uh, and if it's a turnkey, it's going to be built already. It's already out there and it's sold privately and it's just out there and getting turned over in the resale market. Hard to find those. Got to go out and see them. You got to go drive them and you got to be ready for it. So the idea is I'll go through my archives, tell what I have and tell you what I know and what I remember and maybe if one pops up that at least give you the hint of is it worth making the trip to go see it or not. All right, let's play it. So I wanted to start it off with this. This is the first ad that I saw in the first magazine I think that I bought I think it was back in 88 um, and this probe caught my eye just because of the uh, proportions it's all there it looks spot on and that's what got me excited knowing that the proportions were there after seeing on the real one and knowing what it's like so that's what kicked it all off for me is this uh, this ad right here and uh, we'll move into the rest of them but I think you can see my point. Peterson's kit car from 1988. I don't know if this one's still published anymore, but inside a, they have an article on, you know, the uh, Exotic uh, Dreams machine. I think it's short wheelbase, Fiero based. It's GTC, don't remember. Prova is one that kind of started it all, from what I remember, anyways. Here's an early. And there's even ads in here too. See down here, dream machines. What is this one? Exotic Illusions. Okay, I remember this. Uh, Demetrios, I think. Yeah, there he's there. So uh, he, I do remember, he's building cars, and he has built cars, short wheelbase, long wheelbase. I think he bought cars back and rebuilt them, refreshed them up, resold them. Where was he? I think he's in uh, ch -ch -ch Pennsylvania. I think he's still there. Anyways, um, yeah, I think he's still active too. Kick car. Hmm, what is this one? January of 99. I had a buyer's guide. Oh, here we go. American fiber bodies. You guys aren't going to be able to see this very well. Small pictures. They had a... It wasn't authentic. It was... You could tell they had to recreate it. Um, this blushy. Yeah, I don't even know. Some of these, I don't remember them back in the day. I remember seeing some of the ads. There's exotic illusions we talked about already. This is always fun to look at now. Euroworks, they had a short wheelbase and a long wheelbase. Um, if I remember right, there's the long wheelbase. And there's the Easton Armstrong. Uh, that was the one that, I think they were just turnkey. Uh, but anyways, that was, uh, kind of got me worked up because I thought I was going to have to buy a turnkey. That's where I was leaning towards. But Euroworks, their car's pretty close too. The long wheelbase. Who we got here? This IFG. Who is that? Who is that? Oh, Exotic Enterprises. And then who's this one here? Exotic Enterprises. Anniversary model. Uh, there's another one they had. It's not really an exact one. 
Breakers, another one they had. So I think they must have been some kind of broker, maybe? I don't know. I can't remember the final vision. Another Fiero Rebot, I think it says on here, but I can't remember much about them. Uh, Imaginary Fiberglass. I remember them. They were out of California. They, they, they had a 25th long wheelbase. Um, they were popular in California, but didn't see much around here. I think that's it for all the Kamikash replicas. So, short wheelbase stuff. You know what? It's in the industry. It's around. They're cheap, quick, easy to build, all that kind of stuff. So, it got them started. So, it's kind of your own rendition of a Kuntosh, short wheelbase stuff. Never interested me, but it's out there, it's in the industry, it's a part of it. But These are probably not going for nearly as much as the ones that I've, I've got or other people that have that are close to the authentics. They're, they go from anywhere from, depending on the condition of what they are, you know, a lot cheaper. So some people like them, some people don't. Man of War. I think this is, if I remember right, and this time they were under, probably says in here somewhere, because I can't remember, India Exotics, which is, uh, if I remember right, is also one time, I can't remember, I went and visited these, I've seen this car, so it's a long wheelbase version. But it's extended long so that you could fit a Chevy, you know, 350 in there. And then they reverse the drive back through the oil pan to a differential in the back. So the idea was you could basically run a traditional uh, linear setup of your 350, you know, out of Corvette or whatever. Have you? But you had a long wheelbase so you can see they extended the car to the back here so it's a lot longer than uh, you know the uh, OEM style wheelbase. Here's your works again. They're popular, some great shots of their cars and they were popular in the magazines when I remember them. There you go, this is one of the last kick car illustrators I bet. When is this one? Two thousand So there's a uh, Euroworks car. I've never seen one in person. I don't know. I'm looking at pictures and that. They look pretty close, but um, you know, you have to see them in person to kind of get the proportions and see if they took it off of an authentic car or not. You know, I don't know. It's hard to say. Looks pretty close. I know they uh, they're one of the last surviving ones. Of course, they're not around anymore. But uh, they were popular in the U.S. It was one of my favorite books. I used to buy it every year for a long time. I haven't kept them all. I think this is the last one I have. But anyways, it's all the kick cars that were available back in the time. I don't even know. I don't think it's around anymore. You, know, you can look for it. And I can't remember who wrote it and who did it. But uh, it was always great. You know, I always loved getting it because they, they tried to get everybody in the industry rallied up to, to be in here. So there's the Armstrong, which is... Um, very similarly, Bill Kester, it's one of his bodies, I think is what they use, but they sold mostly turnkey. Uh, here's basically mine, so custom motor cars. This one's showing the uh, Kunin kit, uh, not like mine. They had an anniversary model too. Um, GCT, I do remember them, around... They were always in everything, but I don't remember, if I never saw one of their cars. American Fire Fiber Bodies, uh, I've seen lots of pictures of their cars, they're not exact, it's kind of, uh, it's close, you know, it's however people, same thing here. You know, they uh, came up and created a body, and the best way they didn't, had me know. Uh, Marauders, another one, never, I think I only saw, ever saw one for sale. I've never seen one. I have no idea. It's not. It doesn't look like it's really close. Elegant Motors is the one that I told you about with the long wheelbase. 
I went and visited the car. I saw the short wheelbase car in their showroom. It wasn't complete, it was just the body on it, rolling chassis. Uh, but their big push was on the extended wheelbase. We could use a traditional uh, drivetrain from GM and then reverse the drive back under through the oil pan to a diff in the back. Uh, but you, your wheelbase, I think, was, I can't remember how much longer, six or eight inches longer or something. So they extended at the back of the car. But they did have a short uh, wheelbase that was um, really quite close to the uh, authentic one, but I, I can't remember it all now. I think I can't even remember if I took pictures back then when I was there, but uh, I may have, and I just don't know where they are now. CNN in the UK, there they were going for the longest time. I think their web state's still up and going. They were doing the knockoff rims as well, and uh, I don't know what it's all about to now. All right, this one's. I think it's a DCSupercars.com, and this is out of the uh, latest issue of Kick Car. Well, not latest. One of the issues I had. I don't actually subscribe anymore because I got my cars, so I'm not uh, following the stuff anymore. But if anybody's you know looking or what you should uh, pick up, there are Kick Car magazines out there. You just gotta sign up and get them delivered. There's what you can find inside. All right, so that's everything I've got. You know, if uh, I'm sure there's a whole whack more and there's a bunch I forgot and they just, I couldn't find articles on them. Even if I go through these magazines, I look, look through the back and I see some of the ads that some of those builders been, oh yeah, I remember that guy. Oh yeah, I remember this one. So I know there's a lot more out there. So, you know, the thing is nowadays, the only way we're gonna find them is through these old magazines and those guys, they aren't building, they aren't selling anymore. Their kits just might be out there and that's what you're looking for, to give you a hint. So, somebody who's looking to buy a kit, uh, you know, mine, uh, like I said, was a custom uh, kit back in the time, but there's others that are close. The Euroworks was another one on my list. I always wanted, you know, Provo was always out there. And each of them has their pros and cons. And those are the things you get to learn as you get it more into the industry and understand it. You know, the, um, yeah, the Provo was always really close to the original, and what I remember is that some of the bodies were weaker because that was in the early days of the fiber lasting and all that. But they probably got better as they got on, but who knows how many of those kits they built? I really don't know. I don't know if anybody knows. But that's really what started a lot of it, at least what I remember anyways. And because the kit was so close to the original, it really caught everybody's eye and that created all the excitement. And then it just spun off from there for a bunch of other builders. That, started doing the same thing and that's when Ferrari Lambo got excited so that's it you aren't gonna find a, a new one you know you like I say you gotta go looking there's a few places in the forums you gotta check in the forums you gotta stay active in those and let everybody know you're looking and be ready to buy and ready to go see it and hopefully it's in your neighborhood when you do find one good luck guys yeah hold the presses yeah, I'm back on the editing couch here again just because I got some news. So I decided to post a preview of this video on the Facebook Countach replica page. Just, just I don't know everything about the industry and thought I'd just post it up there to get some more feedback. And lo and behold, somebody local in the UK chimes in on what's old is new again. Prova design we could buy Countach replica kits again. This is great news. So I did reach out to them and I talked to a partner in the UK. Uh, there's apparently three that have uh, partnered up and are rebuilding the car. The old Prova molds are done. Uh, I can't use them anymore. They just uh, need to be rebuilt and that's exactly what they're doing. They're redoing the molds and uh, reworking the whole chassis, making a more modern driveline to accept an Audi uh, driveline, which is perfect for the car, and it'll give us all lots of options, and a great sound. So it's all good news. Uh, so I had a short chat with them. I uh, hope to get some more information in the future. So stay tuned for more information, and as soon as I get it, we'll share it with you. So uh, looking forward to hearing about it, because that's great news. We could buy kits again. Awesome.
This one's in need of repair. I was glad to find out it wasn't in need of a test drive to figure it out. Sunroof. Problem. If they stay open like that, that's a problem. Okay. They said the button doesn't feel right. Yeah, I agree. Button's broken. Found a broken fit. This is supposed to be in there. Gonna have to get that. New part. We'll glue it for now. Short term, I can get the roof closed and it'll work for a little bit. We had a nice day yesterday, so I cleaned it up. Look what I found. I was attacked. I don't know if you can see that with all the lights bouncing off of there everywhere, but let me get a little closer. I think somebody backed into me. Let's see what we can do about it. Hard to see, but this should be out a little bit. You see how it's kind of bent from here to here straight? come out a little bit. Let's see if we can heat it up a bit. Eh, it's a little better. Just use the old Blake's heat gun to warm it up. Then just hold it to shape with the towel. It got a better shape to it. Now we gotta see what we can do about this. Use some fine cut cleaner there. For and that seems to have gotten rid of a lot of it, except for the deep stuff. Hard to see it on camera, but you can just see a couple of the deep marks where it's gone through the paint. Get the touch up for that. You always got to have it handy, eh? Too bad. Oh, that's, uh, you can, if I catch the angle right here, you can see. Dead on, it's... Hard to see. We'll see what it's like when I get out in the sun. But anyways, from five feet, it's five, ten footer maybe.